lots to go through, so let's get down to it. Current debt is nearly six trillion. We're getting close. We've only got another 30 billion to go, and or 33 billion, and we're there. Yahoo! It's amazing that people don't even know that. Um, if you have a good look at this, by the way, this is just Aussies. If you actually follow the figures that they're actually giving you here, um, it's un unbelievable that they think we can even pay. Anyone could think we would pay this back. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but business debt is $843 billion. It's almost a trillion dollars. Total private debt, $2 trillion, nearly $3 trillion. Here's a big one. Credit card debt. $48 billion. Money supply. So we, we've got a trillion dollars, nearly two trillion in circuit in the broader money supply. But we only have 71 billion currency. What does that tell you, folks? Here's the big one. 67,000 GDP per capita, 67,565. And that is our gross domestic product, which is probably wrong because it's dropped like a stone. By the way, folks, today is the Friday, the 58th, 2016, and it is 10.32 a.m. WAST. So look at this. This is just ridiculous. Anyway, moving on. Let's, let's find something happier to talk about. The stock market <laughs> is rigged. Absolutely rigged. It's criminal, folks, what they're getting away with. Absolutely criminal. And yes, they are criminals. Um, it's, it's the biggest casino in the world at the moment. They're doing everything they can to try and prop up the system. And I'm going to prove it to you. Here is... Sorry, folks, something's gone wrong here. No, we're okay. Here is the uh, Zero Hedge site that I read all the economic stuff on. And the reason is just because he's he's not a mainstream media bloke and he does this all himself. You know, he obviously gets help, but I don't know, whatever. But yesterday, the Bank of England cut its uh, lending rate to 25 base points above zero. And... Why is that important? Well, folks, if you know anything about economics, you can't get back from zero. You physically can't do it. No one's ever done it. It's impossible. No nation in the world has ever gone to zero and gone out of it. And I'll give you an example. The US government put it up 25 base points, and now they're going to have to drop it. Because if you go up, your debt goes up. It's as simple as that. So this is all imploding right in front of everyone's eyes and not a single person is, you know, there's hardly anyone apart from you guys that are watching this and a couple of others that are even interested. They're all too busy sipping lattes and um, buying new frocks or whatever on their credit card debt, which I just showed you is staggering amount of debt. Gone are the days when people use common sense. So this is a good, really good article if you want to read this on Zero Hedge and it'll tell you exactly why it's all going to end up in huge tears. Now, the other thing is, just give me two seconds here. So, folks, like I said, while you and I and other people are now sitting here um, sipping lattes and um, buying new frocks, as Venezuela, is the, the country is now so bad that people are trying to leave and they're even slaughtering animals in the zoo to eat. 
this is happening in the 21st, is it 21st century? 21st century as we're speaking. Right next to America. You know, they're, they're starving to death in Venezuela. Apparently they're breaking across the borders and when they get to Guatemala or wherever this closest country, they walk into shops and start crying because there's actually food there. So this this article here on Zero Hedge is is probably you know the most sobering read you can have, and the reason for that is because folks remember Venezuela is going to be our everyday living very soon, and if you're not prepped up and ready, then there's a good chance you may even get eaten. Sounds dramatic, I know, but it's actually true. Okay, pole shift. I actually uh, got, in, got in touch, well, he got in touch with me actually, because they don't have any um, way for me to contact these guys. Um, and he asked if I could use, if I use his site, he's happy for me to use the site. I don't know the gentleman's name, sorry about that. But he's, he's very happy with what we do on this site and how we promote things and run the things, etc. And he's asked for, for me to just to mention his site which I do every time anyway. But look, this guy's out there on a limb. He's doing this all himself, as far as I can tell, perhaps with another. And he's trying to get this data out so everyone can actually see it. He's not sure what these are here. Uh, on, the, on the ends, he thinks it might be uh, miles or whatever. But he's more interested in these. Now, he told me in 2013, the Earth had tilted 20 degrees already. So I'm going to try and do a bit of work with him over the next couple of days. And hopefully we'll get to the point where we'll be able to tell you exactly how much degrees it's actually tilted. I personally think if it's tilted, it was tilted 20 degrees back here, for example, in uh, 2013, then we must be, you know, just about on our side by now. And like it says there, um, the months are out of place as well, as the tilt is still more than last year and is way more extreme than three years ago. Well, if you haven't noticed, in America right now, you're having the worst, or in Northern Hemisphere, you're having the summer that we told you you were going to have, because we just had it. And it's going to get worse because this summer's going to be worse than last year. So if you know how to grow crops or anything like that, or vegetables in your garden, get protection for them this time. Get covers and stuff and keep them out of the sun. They'll still grow because of the heat. Yeah, and keep yourselves hydrated. That's really important. But when I get for more information from this gentleman, I'll, I'll pass it on to you guys. And that's his, his site there. Wizarurad.com forward shift access drift HTML. He's got a better one down here. Wizarad.com. Copyright. Okay. I'm not trying to steal his stuff. I'm just trying to show you guys the work that this guy does, which is fantastic. Okay. Now we get on to the tricky stuff. In Australia, we had a massive earthquake the other day, and we weren't even told about it. On the 27th, or sorry, it was the 25th, 25th of June, this little baby here popped up, which is a 6.1 earthquake. Right there, right underneath Australia. That's Adelaide there. That's Melbourne there. Hobart's down here. And in Western Australia, there's Albany, Esperance, Etc. down this way. Now, the reason I'm going to say I'm saying this is because there was not one notification to anyone in Australia, not one, that a 6.5 tsunami would have been coming. Not one. I'm going to show you why in a minute, why this is, why you, it's important. Well, I got an email from a gentleman called Carl, who's a sub of mine in the UK. So he sent me this and he said, did you know, did you know about the earthquake? And I said, well, I knew about the earthquake, but the headline itself is misleading because it's massive 6.1 bloody thing. Magnitude earthquake rocks Southern Australia's experts issue tsunami warning. Well, I can tell you quite frankly, folks, that there was no tsunami warning to any of us here in Australia. Not one, nothing, zip. 
So they're lying. Just thought I'd show you that, just so you knew. And it gets better. I'll get rid of that because it's got so many cookies attached to it. Um, sorry, folks, I'll go back to this. It gets better. That's the earthquake there in blue. This is the uh, the actual uh, printout that comes with that when you click on it. The date's right, 25th to the 7th. 2016, 08.58 UTC time, depth of 10 kilometers. Now, yeah, that's interesting. Hmm, let's go back to this one then. 25th, no depth. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, if you go to most of the ones in Australia, and just around us, 0, 0, 0, they keep putting 0 on it. Why? Because I don't want to scare the crap out of us. That's why. Now watch this. I'm just updating this, folks. So this is every single earthquake in Australia and region in the last 30 days. You know, some of these are doozies, guys. But I digress. Best to keep looking and know that these are happening, folks. There's one I didn't even know existed. Right down here. Where's that one then? Must be close. I think that was a long time ago. Anyway, look, keep your eyes and ears open, folks, because they're not going to tell us. And I repeat, they are not going to tell us. So I'll just close these down. They think we're all a bunch of ostriches with our heads stuck up our asses, and they're not going to tell anybody. So be warned. I check it every day now, every day. Here's the other thing. Watch this. Earthquakes. That's that earthquake that I was telling you about. It was a 6.1, so it was probably a 6.2. In the US, they've got it marked down as a 5.9. Now, look at all these bloody earthquakes in the last 30 days. It's just phenomenal. I'll change it. That's in the last seven days, folks. Look at that. Japan just got hit with two massive earthquakes yesterday. Six point two. Hiroshima. Every day, folks, you should be getting up and watching, looking at these. Yeah, they're manipulated and whatever, but. Better to know something than nothing. Okay. Let's go to the weather camps. As you know, there's something coming towards us. But what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to show you this so you can actually grasp what's going on here. Because this is bizarre. All right? So I'll take this back. Sorry. Right, so that's night time. Now watch what happens when I bring it forward. Right, watch how the sun 
is manipulated. And what I mean by that, watch how it pulses. See that? See that? That's phenomenal, isn't it? Look at that. Now that's only at 256, so that's got nothing to do with the camera. <laughs> See that? That's bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> you can't make this up. Now, this is where it gets interesting. On the side here, you can see a sphere, All right? Now, I couldn't, I showed you this last one and I was a bit pessimistic about it because I thought it might have been a lens flare. But of course, it's not a lens flare because it's actually traveling with the sun. That's if this is the sun, by the way. I don't even know why it's doing what it's doing. But just keep an eye on the side there. See it? It literally just drops out on the side there. So watch right here. You see that? That's the planet, or a planet. Just keep watching. So there's no way you could see that with the naked eye. If you tilt your screens back just a little bit, you'll see it even better. The reason why it shows up now is because it's on a similar uh, trajectory as the sun, but it's actually on a different one, if you know what I mean. It's not moving at the same pace, and it becomes illuminated by the sun at this point. That's a good shot. Look at that. Can't miss it. Now the other thing is it's actually traveling down with the sun, not away from the sun, like a typical lens flare would do. And you can just faintly see it as the sun goes across the horizon. You can just see it if you still got your screen tilted back. Just there. Still just see it. And then, of course, once the sun goes, then it's gone. And there we go again, the two sunsets. Two sunrises and two sunsets. It's actually getting brighter. Look at that. You'd swear the sun was coming up, wouldn't you? That looks like a sunset, a uh, sun up. Okay, we'll go to the next one now. In Perth the other day, we had a sunset that 
even every single person on the radio, the, you know, the radio announcers in the breakfast morning shows, um, advised, every, you know, they were actually talking about it on the radio. So what I'm going to do is, this, these are earlier, right? The sun's coming up, obviously. Uh, it's Jandicott Northeast on Wednesday, August 3rd. Okay, so I'll show you 6, 10 a.m. It's a pity I don't have the time lapse, but it won't work. They've shut off for this one now. Keep an eye on this fuselage of this plane and the right, right wing, because then you can line up the sun when you go back and play it later. You can actually watch the sun come up in a different way each time. All right. We had, this sunset has to be seen to be believed. It was so unusual that everyone was talking about it. Okay, so we'll try and do five minute splits. See the red? It gets, it gets way worse. Unbelievable. Six twenty. You just see the sun starting to come up now. Notice how there's light sources everywhere there. Six twenty five. Look how fierce it is. It's just fierce. Now, as I said, watch the fuselage of the plane. Because you can quite clearly see. Oh, sorry, folks. Okay, folks, sorry about that. Pushed the wrong button. Um, yeah, you can just see the intensity of this sun in the morning. It's just incredible. Let's go to 6.45. This is only just getting warmed up, folks. Wait till you see it. I'm hoping that you guys can go on this and get a, a time lapse on it because you can actually see the uh, the different sun um, anomalies, for want of a better word. You got one here, one over there, and there's even one in the corner here. But it's difficult to see it on this. But when it's on time lapse, you can actually see it 100%. So I'll go to 6:50. Look how intense this is getting. Now, you've got two different light sources here, one here and one over here. And there was another one over here, but it's gone. And the fuselage of the plane, look at there, line it up through there. That's the engine through there. Now just keep that in mind. Now look at that. Isn't that something else? This freaked a lot of people out, folks, and I mean a lot of people. There was people ringing into radio shows and everything saying about this the other morning. This is uh, Jandicott, which is about one hour from where I live, going south. Like I said, the pictures don't really do it justice. They're, they're good, but you should see the actual um, the time lapse. It's unbelievable. Look at this. You swear, you know, it's like the earth on fire. Yeah, 
in, as per normal. Ball goes back down. Look at that. Never in my life have I ever seen anything like that. It's just crazy. Just pure red oxide. Everyone's talking about it, like no one had ever seen anything like it. Which is good, because people are starting to wake up to themselves. So, let's go to 7054, sorry. So, remember that it was that you could actually see the direct light coming up just there on that engine. Now, it's over here. How does it do that? This was the one I wanted to show you. So this is 708. And now look where the sun comes up. Directly over that. So it's gone from here to there. You can go and look for yourselves. It's, it's true. It's exactly how it looked. From there to over here. Which is a big degree shift. Anyway, if you want to check it out, go and have a look for yourselves. It's bloody spectacular if you can get it on time lapse. Okay, let's get rid of that one. Okay, folks, time to start talking about prepping. I don't think, in all honesty, I'm going to be doing many more pictures, uh, videos in regards to Nibiru. Um, in my mind, it's pretty well useless now because there's so many people looking for it and doing it and everything else. Um, although I like doing it, I think it's pretty insignificant now because, you know, I think you'd have to be some sort of bloody moron and not to, uh, realize that something's actually there. Um, so the best thing to do now is to stop and take stock of what you're doing and get prepared. That just makes common sense to me. Um, This vehicle is a Toyota Land Cruiser 4x4. I only picked that because that's exactly what mine is, exactly the same as that. I've got two of them. Um, the first thing about prepping is to know where you're going. Once you prep, once you're ready to go, where are you going? You can't just drive into the sunset. The second most important thing is how or what are you using to get there? So, what you have to ask yourself, folks, are you going to be driving away in this with your kids, the dog, the cat, if you can find them, um, I don't know, uh, a month's supply of food, you know, if you're a two and two family, four backpacks, tents, or are you going to use your common sense and have something like this? and a trailer and roof racks so you can get everything on it. We're actually at that time, folks, where everyone start, needs to start thinking about exactly that. You know, that's kind of what, what mine looks like. And I fully understand that not everyone's going to be able to get away in one of those or drive to wherever you want to go in one of those. That stands to reason. But if you can, you should be seriously thinking about doing it now, right now. Now, like I said, that's my car. If I got your picture of it, it looked exactly like that. So it's just another prepping tip there. If you can afford to get something like that or change the other car over. Uh, in America, I would probably suggest that you would have to go for a 
uh, what are they called? A ram or a dodge or you know something like that. I can't remember. It's pretty sure it's a ram, isn't it? Chevy. Something you can you can um, comfortably get in everything in, secure everything, including yourselves, and drive. Now don't forget if you're going to buy one of these. <clears throat> these are so electrified now that you know I'd be surprised if you get them blocked with it. You know if someone lets an EMP off. Don't forget this. If someone lets an EMP off, that's going nowhere. It's going to collect rust forever. It's going to be screwed electrically. Something like this. Yeah, you might have a little bit of problem here and there, but uh, cars that are built in the early 90s and stuff, they don't have that sort of problem. You know, like this is a, uh, I'm not sure what this is. Fancy job on it. But the problem is, cars built now all have the electronic stuff in them that's going to fry. So you'd be looking at an 80s, 90s car before the year 2000 to get you a car that's going to get you around because the other one's going to be so electrified you won't be able to get anywhere. So it just makes common sense, folks. All right. As per usual, we shall finish with the Lord's Prayer. Okay, here we go. The Lord's Prayer, King James Version. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Folks, um, we're kind of at that stage now where... I'm still going to post stuff, but it's going to be more on the prepping side of things because I think that's more relevant than anything else. And I'll also be sending out more group emails for the uh, the bureau community this weekend because I think it's now more important than ever to be talking to each other. You can't do this on your own. You cannot. You can try, but you won't go far. But I'll explain that in the next video. part of the world you're watching this video lots to go through so let's get down to it current debt is nearly six trillion we're getting close we've only got another 30 billion to go and or 33 billion and we're there yahoo it's amazing that people don't even know that um, if you have a good look at this by the way this is just Torsies. If you actually follow the figures that they're actually giving you here, um, it's un unbelievable that they think we can even pay, anyone could think we would pay this back. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but business debt is $843 billion. It's almost a trillion dollars. Total private debt, $2 trillion, nearly $3 trillion. Here's a big one. Credit card debt. Forty-eight billion. Money supply. So we we've got a trillion dollars, nearly two trillion in circuit in the broader money supply, but we only have seventy one billion currency. What does that tell you, folks? Here's the big one. 67,000 GDP per capita. 67,565. Ooh. And that is our gross domestic product, which is probably wrong because it's dropped like a stone. 
And by the way, folks, today is the Friday, the 5th, the 8th, 2016, and it is 10.32 a.m. WAST. So look at this. This is just ridiculous. Anyway, moving on. Let's, let's find something happier to talk about. The stock market <laughs> is rigged. Absolutely rigged. It's criminal, folks, what they're getting away with. Absolutely criminal. And yes, they are criminals. Um, it's, it's the biggest casino in the world at the moment. They're doing everything they can to try and prop up the system. And I'm going to prove it to you. Here is... Sorry, folks, something's gone wrong here. No, we're okay. Here is the uh, Zero Hedge site that I read all the economic stuff on. And the reason is just because he's he's not a mainstream media bloke and he does this all himself. You know, he obviously gets help, but I don't know, whatever. But yesterday, the Bank of England cut its uh, lending rate to 25 base points above zero. And... Why is that important? Well, folks, if you know anything about economics, you can't get back from zero. You physically can't do it. No one's ever done it. It's impossible. No nation in the world has ever gone to zero and gone out of it. And I'll give you an example. The US government put it up 25 base points, and now they're going to have to drop it. Because if you go up, your debt goes up. It's as simple as that. So this is all imploding right in front of everyone's eyes and not a single person is, you know, there's hardly anyone apart from you guys that are watching this and a couple of others that are even interested. They're all too busy sipping lattes and um, buying new frocks or whatever on their credit card debt, which I just showed you is staggering amount of debt. Gone are the days when people use common sense. So this is a good, really good article if you want to read this on Zero Hedge. And it'll tell you exactly why it's all going to end up in huge tears. Now, the other thing is, just give me two seconds here. So, folks, like I said, while you and I and other people are now sitting here um, sipping lattes and um, buying new frocks, 